configurations are interesting uh, VHDL elements that can be used in larger designs to manage how components are used within a design. So although configurations are more useful in very large designs, especially when there are multiple teams managing a single, uh, a single piece of work, it's still interesting to figure out how they work. Configurations are basically used to manage how a component is used as an instance within another component. So when we uh, talked about structural design, we saw how an entity or a design, a full design, can then be used as a component uh, within another design and can be instantiated multiple times. Configurations allow us to do two things. First of all, they allow us to perform uh, instance architecture binding. So recall that a certain entity could have more than one architecture. And we show, showed how uh, when we instantiate the entity within another design, we can bind the specific instance to a specific architecture. Configurations can be used to do this in a centralized location in a structural way. The other use of configurations is to rename the ports of a component before they are used within another design. So let's take a look at the specific syntax uh, used for these two users. So uh, this is how we manage uh, instance architecture binding. And this syntax can be a little bit confusing at first because it uses the keywords for and end for. And the key point here is to notice that this is not a loop. This is not a loop by any means. Once you use the configuration keyword and within the body of the configuration, the use of for and end for does not indicate a loop. It indicates that we are configuring for this architecture. So the for indicates that we are uh, configuring for the following architecture. So we can configure for a specific architecture, multiple instance, uh, in, uh, instance uh, uh, bindings, and we can do this on a, a hierarchical level so that we can declare multiple levels of configurations. So let's take a look at an example. Uh, in this example, we have a, a huge, like a big architecture. The highest level architecture is called Big Adder. And Big Adder has, uh, this is an entity name actually, and Big Adder has two architecture. One is called Struct and one is called Behavioral. Now within the, architectural, uh, the architecture Struct, we have, um, two entities, one named uh, ENT1 and one named ENT2. Each of them has multiple possible architectures. So Entity1, ENT1, has uh, two possible architectures, Arch11 and Arch12, uh, whereas Entity2 has three possible architectures. You see also under uh, the behavioral architecture, we have uh, multiple entities, each of which has two possible architectures. So what I'm showing here is that we have a specific uh, instance, couple of instances where we use these two uh, architectures, struct and behavioral. And under each of them, we also use specific bindings so that instance IA is bound to architecture arc 1.1. Instance IB is bound to architecture arc 2.3. And so the shaded architectures are the architectures that we want to bind this instance too. And so let's look at how the uh, syntax for this looks like. So we start by uh, using the, co the configuration keyword. And then uh, after the configuration keyword, we use uh, a, a name for the configuration and we call it current configuration in this case. It could be any name other than uh, a keyword. And then of and of, we have to specify which entity we are uh, specifying the configuration for, and this is the highest level entity that we are dealing with, Big Adder. Now, uh, for the two possible architectures of this entity, Struct and Behavioral, we define two different configurations. And so you'll have two for statements here. Again, this for does not indicate we are dealing with a loop. It is just saying that the body of this section of the configuration deals with the configuration of the struct architecture. And so this is for the behavioral architecture. 
under each of these we will use other for statements so uh, for and for and the syntax here is for uh, instance name uh, co colon entity name and then we use this syntax to uh, to indicate the uh, architecture to instance binding and so we use use entity work all of these are keywords dot the name of the entity and between braces we use the specific architecture that we will be using for this specific um, uh, uh, instance and so work of course is the work library which is always the uh, default library uh, where all of the current designs are saved and um, as you can see this binds the architecture in the braces to uh, the the uh, instance which is used in the for statement and so you will find that this corresponds directly to this binding in the figure for for example under the behavioral architecture uh, for example for instance d instance d is an instance of entity 3 and so we actually have two we have three instances of entity 3 and um, the this instance of entity 3 instance d specifically is going to bind architecture 3 to to the entity and so you can see that this allows us to bind um, uh, specific architectures to specific instances and so you can de declare the use of this entity multiple times each time with a different uh, architecture. This can also be used hierarchically to uh, describe instantiations on a hierarchical basis and so here for example we have a configuration and we call it current configuration and it is a configuration of the entity named big adder. Now under the configuration for big adder we define a, uh, uh, an architectural configuration called arc1 and this uh, is gonna uh, declare one instance of the uh, architecture of the uh, entity called small adder so for small adder and the instance name is called inst a and for this specific instance we are going to use the um, uh, the architecture arc s1 and so small adder has two possible architectures arc s1 and arc s2 we're going to use the architecture arc s1 for the instance inst a and so this line takes care of this configuration but under this configuration we also have uh, other configurations that are done hierarchically so for arc s1 we spe specify specific architectural bindings under it and so small adder uh, under the architecture arc s1 has two instances inst f1 and inst f2 they are instances of entities fa1 and fa2 each of these instance uh, entities have two possible architectures and the specific bindings are shown uh, shaded and so for the instance inst f1 we are using this architecture for the instance inst f2 we are using this architecture and so configurations can be used to indicate uh, architectural bindings on a hierarchical level. The other use of configurations is to adapt the port names of a component before it's used in another design. And so, for example, here we have a, uh, an entity called FA1, and it is defined with ports named A, B, C, in, S, and C out. This is obviously a full adder with three input bits and two output bits. And we have an architecture of a uh, larger design called small adder which uh, I'm gonna guess is an n-bit adder that uses multiple instances of the uh, full adder and um, you will see here that the port names are different so you'll see that the ports a b and c n are renamed into in one into and in three s and c out are renamed into out one and out two this can actually be correct. These two designs, these two uh, entity de de declarations, these two pieces of code can exist in the same library and there will be no error if we use a configuration to bind the two together. And so this configuration 
of small adder for a specific architecture called arc1 is going to do something to a specific instance of the component called full adder1. So it's going to indicate which architecture binding to use for it, but it's also going to declare a new port map, which, which uh, maps port A to port in one, port B to port in two, and so on. And so you will see that this correspondence is described here. And it's very important to notice that this port map does not actually uh, declare a specific uh, signal connection at the instance level. What it's doing is it's renaming the ports of the entity when it's used as a component in another design. So this is not a true port map where we are actually declaring connections of the instance. This allows us to use different port names, completely different port names when we use the port map. So what's the judgment on configurations in general? There's nothing that you uh, can do in terms of architecture to instance binding that you can do using a configuration that you cannot do without a configuration. We saw how to bind specific instances to architectures within the body of the architecture. You don't actually need the configuration uh, to do this. Uh, also, this practice of renaming port names is, can be very confusing and probably reduces the readability of code. So configurations in a small design are generally not that good. They're actually not something that helps a lot. Where they do help is when you have a very large design, which is managed by uh, many different people, or when you get code from somewhere else, ready, readily written code, and you just don't like the port names because they are incompatible with some naming convention that you use. So configurations are things that you have to care about more in a, in a commercial setting than in an academic setting.